Chris Jeff. Nice to be back, Joe. Since it's been a year now, people have been asking, what was the moment you knew? When did you know? Everyone seems to have an answer. The moment you realized COVID was real, a danger that would change our lives for the foreseeable future. And Chef, you probably know by now, my answer is the day that I talked to you. It was a year ago. On one of the last days we were still in studio here at GBH. And you knew a lot before a lot of us because the restaurant business saw what was coming and the urgency and emotion in your voice that day stopped us in our tracks. I don't know if you remember that day as well as I do, Chef, uh, but most of your fears that you described that day were realized. Yeah, unfortunately. I hate, I hate that I was so right. You know, I remember the day, it was two days before Governor Baker actually announced we're closing Massachusetts down, all restaurants. Yeah. It was a Friday night um, and it was, we were packed and we, I literally saw young people toasting COVID. They were like making a joke about it. They were, they had their drinks like, Hey, it's a COVID-19 and they're drinking. I looked at my managers and the bartenders were trying to be six feet away. I, no one had masks on and we're like, this is crazy. I'm endangering my employees, my team. I, I there's no way. So we literally closed so that, that service. Like we're done. We're not, we're not going to reopen until this thing is over. And then I, like, Again, two days later, Governor Baker then announces uh, with Marty Walsh and, okay, restaurants are closed. So, you know, so I was two days before it became law, but it was so obvious that this is going to be a long process because not everyone still today believes this is real, which I just, I just mortified and flabbergasted that some people, I spoke to someone not to be mentioned in Florida hmm. and we did a thing live on Zoom and He's like, All right, how you doing? He goes, oh, Florida is great. We're back to normal. Well, we, none of us believe in the hoax. I'm like, excuse wow. me? The hoax? This, this is two weeks ago. I'm like, what hoax? You know, the COVID-19 thing. We're fine. I'm like, I, I literally like, I, I can't believe a smart, intelligent human being in this country still actually is listening to those types of theories that it's a hoax. And I, I'm like, you can tell my mother-in-law, who's now in heaven, who died on December 23rd at 95, nursing home, one of four people that got sick. She died a week later. Jeez. You're going to tell me that was a hoax? Because she is dead. And that's not a hoax. No. So, Hoaxes that's tend all not to kill people. Uh, I'm no. sorry for your loss, Chef. This is... Yeah, everyone's got a story like this, right? Everyone's got a, a family member. It's, or a friend. The, it's the worst. It's just the dying alone mm -hmm. was so painful because you really you you want to be with your family you know she's my wife is one of six kids <sighs> the one saving grace and thank god for her cell phones is we did have at one time when she was on her deathbed as you know the last thing you lose is hearing right so you can hear people still speak we had the 18 family members all grandchildren all of us were on a call with with nana at one time and I believe how energy works. So she could feel the energy of her whole family. Um, Jesus Christ. Um, just telling, telling, oh, geez, sorry, Joe, mm. telling her how, how much we loved her and about fa fam family love. And she could, she could kind of grunt. She'd be like, mm, uh. so we knew she heard us. And, that really was special because she could feel the family love um, before she passed. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, if it was normal times, we wouldn't have gotten all 18 of the Talbots together in her, in her hospital room. Right. So that was incredibly powerful to have everyone telling her, thank you. Thank you for the family love. And, but I mean, I don't, you don't, none of us want to die alone. That's just, I, I can't think of, I can't think of anything more, just more horrific, to be honest. And, uh, but she did hear how much we loved her and how much we thanked her for everything she and Doki did for us. And, for uh, and I'm, and this, this has happened 500,000 times, right? This isn't yeah. my story. This is the world's story. 
So, yeah, Jesus Christ, guys. Whoever thinks this is a hoax, just talk to anyone that lost someone. There, there's, this is not a hoax. You're going to get me going again, Chef. You already are. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I think it's you, no, Joe. <laughs> I never cry, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I, blame, I blame my mother for all of it. Uh, maybe you can relate. What's the status of Blue Dragon right now, Chef? Because we were... We were shedding tears at the idea of, of people going hungry, of, of restaurant workers who don't have yeah. health benefits, people who work paycheck to paycheck. That's yeah. not changed for a lot of them. It's not changed at all, unfortunately, right? And again, I, I am not big enough, strong enough, smart enough to change immigration policy. We need to get that fixed. Anyone that comes to America and is working needs to be legal. I mean, <laughs> it's called the food chain. And if we don't let farmers become legal. We have no more food. And farmers are immigrants. Restaurant workers, they're 50% are immigrants. But they're not getting a bail. They're not going to get the $1,400 or $2,000 or whatever. They never got an unemployment check. They still pay taxes. That system's broke. And, and, these, and these poor immigrants that are not in the system, that are under the radar, are, are just un having unbelievable sufferance right they're, they're in food bank lines they're in uh, you know rural central kitchen lines to get food they have children to feed um it, i can't tell you how desperate uh, so many restaurant employees and other businesses too but the restaurant industry really got hit the hardest um add to that the xenophobia that you know who created by calling it the china virus uh i, I have supported so many asian uh, you know, and virus, virus, uh, hate is a virus, uh, uh, violence against AAPI. There's all of these. Daniel Day Kim and I were trying to trying to get the word out that there, <laughs> these idiots are pushing over old people. I don't care if you're black, white, Chinese, Korean, it doesn't matter. You don't push over an old person. These people are pushing over old people from behind and people have died. It started with getting spit on in Chinatown, and that's disgusting and cruel, but that's not lethal. Now they're pushing 70, 80, 90 year old men and women. There was a case yesterday that a pizza shop owner, a Chinese woman, got beaten by three kids unconscious. What is going on, Joe? Are you kidding me? I, I, and, and I would never accept racism, period. But now racism plus you're killing the elderly? And that is, it's just, I can't believe this is our world right now. It's, it's disgusting, honestly. It, that it's disturbing. So disturbing what is your view now, as you look forward, Chef Ming, over say the next six months to a year, people are starting to bet on a reopening, right? They're, they're making preparations yep. for summer vacations. Uh, Wall Street yeah. is, is trying to adapt to this apparent return to normalcy. But I'm also hearing people talk about, the possibility of a fourth surge. So as a restaurant yep. owner and as a humanitarian, frankly, how are you preparing for the rest of this year? Yeah, I mean, it's Blue Dragon, to answer your question. So Blue Dragon, still in hibernation, still closed. Unfortunately, I don't see it reopening, period, because the seaport where we're at is literally a ghost town, right? No one's, everyone's working from home. The new normal is not going to be everyone comes back. There's going to be X percentage of people. They're going to just stay at home working because it's less it's, it's you know, less expensive. It's very efficient. You don't have to travel. I think the new business is going to be different. People aren't going to fly to New York for those daily meetings anymore. They're just going to Zoom it, right? And so without people in the seaport, that means there's no more lunches. There goes our 150 lunches. There goes our happy hour. And now we're only kind of dinner only uh, there's not enough people. There's not 20,000, 50,000 live in this seaport, right? There's a few thousand. So you can't sustain as a delivery only and whatnot. Uh, I would hemorrhage money if I reopened. Plus the fact, unlike New York, how the hell are we saying let's reopen all the restaurants and we're not vaccinating the restaurant frontline employees? There's no one more frontline besides doctors and nurses and EMTs and firemen. They're super frontline, as I call them. Mm -hmm. The next one right there are the people that work the food lines, food factories, the waiters, the cooks, people that work in the restaurant industry, all the way to the farmers, right? The whole food chain is so integral to keeping our country moving. New York is doing it. Restaurant workers are getting vaccinated. I, I don't know. I, 
again, I know how the government works, but I just think it's so careless and irresponsible to just say, let's open it up. Uh, you'll get vaccinated eventually. I, I think that's a, such a potential spike. And let's, let's be honest, especially in Boston, St. Patty's Day, mm. St. Patty's Day is not a day that people stay in. St. Patty's Day is people go out and get hammered. Let's yeah. be honest. And if you're five beers in, I'm not sure the keeping the mask on is going to be your priority <laughs> when you see that cute girl or cute guy across the bar. That's right. the last thing going to be on your mind. And that's just a disaster. It's not if it's going to be a disaster. It's a disaster. So we, have, <laughs> we need people to, we really need people to step back and just look at the science, right? Listen to Fauci and listen to the scientists on what's happening. Because it's real. It's like gravity. You don't have to believe in gravity. It just is. <laughs> it happens. You drop a pet, it's going to fall. I don't care what your political persuasion is. I don't care what anything. It's science. And to not listen to science is just plain moronic. Uh, and, and not only moronic, it's lethal. So, Chef, so, are you preparing possibly for a phase of your career without a restaurant? Um. Yeah, without a restaurant in Boston, I you know I have I have my restaurant in Big Sky, so I still have that restaurant, and that that fortunately is within a private club, so more insulated uh, and a very safe place. Everyone, all the members get tested once a week, all the staff gets tested once a week. We have these awesome Rens Air air purification systems that can clean the air in twenty minutes. So that in particular is very safe. But to do everything I just said, crazy expensive to test. You know, 800 staff members and the uh, 800 staff and then the members every day, it's north of $100,000 a week of testing. Wow. That is that is untouchable for basically any other restaurant if you're not part of a private club, yeah. right? And, you know, again, again, as you said, I, I, like to, I like to spin it in my head. Okay, what can we do to help the entire restaurant community? I, I do think clean air, is a very big deal and it's going to be a big deal. Air is going to be a commodity now until the end of time, right? Mm -hmm. Even if when COVID goes away, we are all smart enough. There's going to be something like a COVID probably coming back in two years, four years, whatever it is. I don't want to predict that, mm -hmm. but, but I do think restaurants are going to eventually have, you know, like a sticker, like cleaned by Ren's air or, you know, like an OSHA standard sticker yeah. that this, this restaurant follows these protocols. So, all those boxes are checked off. The sanitizer, clean air, all this, but but science is going to dictate this. People are putting UVC light in their duct system. That doesn't do anything, Joe. The the air passes through. If it's not stationary for X amount of time, the UVC light's hitting it directly. It mm -hmm. just goes right through. It doesn't mm -hmm. kill it, right? And you know, yes, you can spray and clean all the surfaces, but it's the air without a mask on and you're eating impossible to eat with a mask we all know that so for that time and you know governor baker's like well when you're not chewing or sipping the mask comes back on <laughs> that's not going to happen in a right. restaurant you're talking you're on a date you're with your family you're going to talk the reason you went to the restaurant is be entertained have food yeah. beverage and talk so that's just it's just unrealistic to say you know get your fork in then put the mask back on and chew yeah, no. It, come on. That's like telling a kid in a candy store, don't touch the candy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's impossible. It's not going to happen. So we just, we, we, I've been saying this since day one. We have to follow the science. But what, why, how it became the science is, you know, not believable is beyond me. I mean, you know, F equals MA, that's science. It, it, you can't change that. You just can't change that. And, and there's enough smart people in this country, in this world. Uh, you see what New Zealand's done? They mm -hmm. follow the science. They had one case of COVID like 10 days ago. One. They closed the country down yeah. for one case. Think about that. And now they have no COVID. My God, follow the science, please. And it's just, you know, the hardest part is, is all the people that don't have an alternative way of making money. They can't just start going online and working from home. They don't speak English. They may not even have a computer. Plus, they have their two parents and two kids living with them in a room of six people. It's just, it's impossible in those neighborhoods to get rid of COVID. There's, it's because they're working. They have to work and they'll do anything. Um, 
as you will. When desperation hits, you will do anything to feed your kids, legal or not, to be honest. I, if I was in that position, I, I literally, would I steal to feed my children? Yeah, I would. It, they're my children. It, I, I have a responsibility. And that's, yeah. that's a very dangerous slope. And, and we have to. You know, I, I do I do think President Biden is doing as good of a job as humanly possible walking into the situation he did and getting the vaccines. Now, the, his last statement was by May and then May, everyone will get vaccinated. But let's just wait to end of May to reopen. What, why are we doing it halfway each in different states? I mean, Texas, no more mask mandate. Uh, I think the quote was that's just Neanderthal. Yes, that is. Right. It's just going so backwards. Some are wondering if Texas could be the start of another surge uh, nationally here. But I guess I actually think if they want to succeed, go for it. Yeah, Please. well, well, maybe Cruz is setting that up in Cancun for us all. I don't know. <laughs> Throwing it out there. Let me ask you, lastly, uh, Chef Ming Tsai, every time I see you tweet, whenever I hear you talk about this, even when it's tough, even when it's bad news, you always end with a wish that people be kind. You always end with hashtag be kind. I don't mean to ask the most obvious question uh, of the interview here, but what do you actually mean when you say that? We're talking about a virus. What does it have to do with kindness? Yeah. You know, since day one, I said this with you earlier. If the kindness curve is just a little steeper than the COVID curve, we got this. Because we have to especially now, you can't be selfish. You have to help strangers and people you know. You have to put the best foot forward. And that could be simply buying a cup of coffee for the guy behind you in Dunkin' Donuts or, or Starbucks, you know, even in the drive through mm -hmm. <laughs> Letting people drive in front of you. Being kind will switch the paradigm i think of the way some people are thinking about it the whole idea of a mask and the reason in asia it's it was not an issue is you wear a mask because one there's pollution but you all also wear a mask because if i'm sick i want to protect everyone around me that's very selfless right it's not a selfish act it's a selfless act it's a kind act i don't even know you on the subway but I know I have a little cough, so I'm going to protect you. That's kindness. Thinking about everyone else. I mean, this is what Buddha and the Dalai Lama, this is what everyone else praises. Think about everyone else first before yourself. I'm not saying don't take care of yourself. Again, I, if you have two newborns and all that, but you can still do it through kindness. This is the time for this world to not be selfish. The selfishness has put us exactly, especially in this country, where we're at. There's just people thinking about, these are my rights. Uh, it's my right to not wear a mask. It's not about rights. It's about science. So if you wear a mask, if we did this 14 months ago, and if this country wore a mask for three weeks, apparently, we would be so out of this hole we're in. Mm. So we know that. So let's just start that. And it's just... It's just so crazy, Joe, that it's became a political thing and a rights thing and my First Amendment thing. Are you kidding me? It's nothing of that. It's science. I it just, I, I don't get it. And and you and I have very smart friends. I went to have PhDs and stuff. And some of them are still like, oh, nah, it's, it's good. It's a hoax. Even after I, this I year. Just, yeah, even after, even after 500,000 Americans have died, how do you even, in a sentence, willingly say it's not really real it's just it's impossible it's just like i'm in a car crash and both the cars are banged up and i tell the officer i, I didn't get in a car crash <laughs> and you can't say that your car's yeah. banged up it's a car crash it it's is just it is. it's unbelievable but yeah I, I love that question joe because it's it's kindness doesn't cost money right it, it's it's an act and more importantly it's your intention that everything I try to do is kindness first. It's just, it's part of the DNA. It's part of the hospitality business, right? We are in this yep. business because we want to make people happy and kindness is part of it. You know, the order, the food, the wine, this, but, but we're spreading kindness, right? We are making money from it in theory, but it's still the act of hospitality, right? 
when you're in the hospitality business, you have one goal, take care of them, take care of everyone else. And you don't know most of them, they're customers. That's an act of kindness. That's why most of us chefs and restaurateurs are in this business. We like to spread joy and like to spread kindness. And believe you me, me and my chef friends and all, this has just been the most challenging, horrific times doing to go foods and go. And I have all my buddies that have their eight and 10 restaurants and their world just collapsed literally. And they're just trying to punt and figure it out because it's not just, you know, it's easy to say landlords don't charge them. Well, guess what? Landlords have kids too. Yeah. Right. So it's, you can't just tell the landlords is comp it because they have huge loans out as well. Uh, but if the community gathers and has the one goal of getting through this through kindness, we will get through this. We have to get through this. If there's only one person I could talk with today on to mark this anniversary, it was you, Chef Ming Tsai. And I want to thank you, uh, thank you for alerting us to this a year ago. I don't know how I would have been brought to that point without you. And I want to thank you for your kindness as well over the last year and trying to help keep our community together. We've learned a lot from you and I hope that we'll keep talking as we recover from this. Thank you, Joe. And thank you so much. It's always, always great chatting with you and stay safe.